Hello everybody, welcome back to the Model Box. If you've watched the Gordon video, link in the description, you might have seen a splendid red engine with a jet black stack at the very end. Hello? This video is on my crusty modified Bachman Trains Jin- Oh, wait, hold on. This video is on my Season 3 inspired James the Red Engine. Bright and cheerful as my red paint. Look at me. I am the smartest, most useful engine on the line. Thank you. Goodbye. This video is not made for kids. I will be showcasing dangerous tools and toxic materials that are potentially hazardous. Children should not have access to these, and please remember proper safety techniques. Thank you. James's look in the classic series slightly changes every season. Season 1 and 2 looking pretty similar, but run down. Seasons 3 and 4 and even 5 are very much the same, with minor changes like the brake pipe direction, red color, and the cab window lining. Like with Thomas and Gordon, I wanted to model my main cast of engines in the Season 3 and 4 aesthetic. The story as you've probably heard before, a commission fell through, thanks Caleb, I'm sorry, and I was left with the shells of these engines and decided to finish them for myself. These being printed by Green Strains and designed by the LBC Thomas. Starting with the body, it was sanded and filled with Tamiya putty multiple times to help fill in any lines or defects. I ended up using Edward's tender as a replacement as even in the show, their tenders are very similar. This was sanded down to get rid of numbers and lining and to help get it prepped for paint. To be closer to James's tender, I had to cut off the doors, step ladders, and the square block thing that Edward has for some reason. Measured and cut out plastic card to fill the gaps and holes. The top of the tender was also cut out to allow for coal to be added later. These areas were filled with putty and sanded a few times until I felt the seams weren't visible anymore. Added the false bottom to the tender and now it was time for the primer. The running board, body, tender, and frames were primer sprayed. Next, I spray painted everything red with Rust-Oleum Poppy Red. I didn't take any pictures and let that sit under a heater while I went and worked on Gordon. I came back a few hours later and masked off the cab side of the tender, boiler supports, the smoke box, and then sprayed them black. Now, for those who have watched the Gordon video, thank you if you have, you would have known that a lot of work was just done in one night to get ready for the Edison train show in Jersey. Wait a minute! My biggest mistake was just about to be revealed. What? It's just an ordinary crabby- <gasps> Oh my god. This is honestly all my fault. The problem with a lot of spray paints is that they can take up to 72 hours to cure. Actually, pfft, I'm the problem. I just didn't want to wait because I'm impatient and did this all last minute like a thilly goose. After all that, I gave up trying to finish James for the show. All my motivation to complete him was gone. But seeing and playing with the replicas from Project Tiger Moth really made up for it. After returning home, I set back to working on getting all those imperfections out. Wet sanded everything, even the running board, and tender chassis. I wasn't happy with the original coats I gave them. Masked off all the black areas and resprayed everything. This time, I let the paint cure until I did anything too crazy with it. While that was happening, I worked on his chassis, and since I'm not a big fan of the stock Bachman James wheels, I had some extra Edward wheels lying around for use. Oh, James with blue wheels is gross. But hey, are you looking better than the other poop? And because of the new changes on the length of the new body, James has that unsettling fat gap between the body and tender. The same issue happened with Gordon. Now I have to shorten the tender drawbar. It's very short now. Pretty much just a double loop, but it's much better. The tender's looking good. The body's looking good. So far, <sighs> so good. One last thing to do before I clear coat the red bugger was to paint the dome. Now, James has a really nice brass dome. The classic series didn't really look the best most of the time. Not as shiny as it could have been in my opinion. So I looked to the fandom for ideas on what to do. Seeing Soda Railway Modeler's James, it made me really want to give him that shine. It just looks so good. It's even made of real brass. Because I don't want to spend more money than I have on James, I painted the dome with some testers enamel paint. It will smooth out and bring out the shine when he gets that clear coat. Which is right now! <laughs> so shiny! Looking much better with that glossy coat. I did accidentally chip the clear coat on his running board and I wasn't satisfied with the texture. So I sprayed him again! BAM! <laughs> Look at that shot! There's still a couple issues with the running board not lining up, but I'll fix that later. But for now it's time to focus on the chassis again. 
Next, I masked off and sprayed all his wheels black, then clear coated them after letting it dry afterwards. One of the most satisfying things to do when modeling is removing masking tape. Whoa. <laughs> oh, he's so nice! With his wheels fitted back on and put together, oh, he's so pretty now! It really is something seeing a model come together. James's whistle on the show was always an interesting feature that I loved about him as a kid. So, to do that, I was originally going to bend this brass whistle at an angle, but I instead took one from my old James. <laughs> Sanded and polished it up, it works as a temporary fix for now. James at this point looks kinda naked, so you know what that means. My favorite part, lining! <sighs> the lining used on my jeans was cut by my buddy George Bold on 95. Love you, Georgie. Boiler bands and the firebox lining came first. I ran into what you could say a fork in the road when it came to James's firebox lining. In the show, James has lining near the front and against the cab, but in the earlier seasons he doesn't have this detail, as only the front lining is added. But after watching season 3 again, I notice he does have the second firebox lining. It's only visible in a couple of shots. This is probably due to the fact that season 3 was filmed in like two sections A and B. The easiest way to notice this is by the shoddy break on James's funnel, smoke, stack, fucking chimney thing, whatever, I'm calling it a funnel. I just ended up not using the second lining, as it's something I could always add in the future if need be. Tackling the black lining along the cab and wheel arches was not as hard this time compared to Gordon's. A lot smoother and little to no redo or mistakes this time. I oh, spoke too soon. I cracked the shell. <laughs> this was an easy fix, just glued it back together. This part of the model is very thin, so it was honestly my fault. I just put too much pressure. Good as new! And now with part one ish done, time for the tender. This was, like earlier, easier this time around. Very smoothly. Oh, wait, what's that? Oh, <laughs> just the paint peeling again. <laughs> I'll just finish the cab window lining. Okay, not bad. I'm not kidding, I took one photo of the fix. I lightly sanded the area with a high grit wet sandpaper and gloss sprayed the tender again. Thank God, it's fixed. Wow! <coughs> I finished the lining on James's tender and moved to the front end to add the details. Lamp iron, screw links, and brake pipe was added and painted up. The tender got its brake pipe and screw link too. I realized after looking at James's season three ruler photos, I put the braking the wrong way up. I'll fix that at a later date. The tail lamp was also added, but it's just blue tacked on. Nothing permanent. I just wanted to give him a tail lamp. Next was to add the coal load. I cut a piece of plastic card to fit in the tender to be easily removed if need be. To add the coal, I covered the card in super glue and then put it in a small container and poured coal onto it. Closed it off and let it dry. I repeated this process about three times. I didn't document this with Gordon, but it's literally the same process. After the third time, I sanded down the sides for an almost snug but slightly loose fit. Just slips right on. Okay, now for the handrails. While fitting the handrail knobs, I, you guessed it, cracked the front of James's boiler. <clears throat> what have I done? I just filled it with putty, sanded, painted, and gave it its gloss coat. Quick easy fix, but one I did not care to fully document again. Once the handrail knobs are added, a piano wire was added for the bar, and I had to bend it to fit around the firebox, just like on the prop. He's really coming together now. In the home stretch, I believe. Now that I was comfortable bringing James to the club for his test run, I bought a DCC decoder, one made by Digitrax. But because of the size of the chip, I decided that the tender would be its home, as I don't want James's body to be too busy. I gotta install a smoke unit eventually. Cut out plastic card, and stacked it to make the base layer for the footplate. Glued the decoder to this part of the tender and mapped out where the wires would go. Made some holes for an easier cut with pin vise, added some weight into the tender for security, and worked on the wire feed to the motor. I had to cut a hole where the actual firebox would be, and to help hide the wires, measured and cut a sort of square tunnel for the cab, and these door looking bits for the tender to help hide the wires better. After fitting and checking to see if he could make the corners, it was painted black. Next, I thinned the side rods by Dremel and polished them. But something's missing. Oh yeah, his number! How could I forget that infamous number 5? <laughs> Lovely. He's almost done! I think. Having the new model against my old crusty Bachman James really shows how much of the model is different, especially through the proportions. I don't think the Bachman James looks bad after some modding either, the fanbase has shown me that. He's not dying, just needs a long-awaited proper overhaul. Just like with Gordon, James had his first reveal at a train show, the Greenberg train show in Oaks, Pennsylvania on January 14th. No running this time, just a fun display with some awesome friends. 
Now, I know James runs, but I've only tested him on a small straight track, so it was off to the club for a test run. For never running further than a foot, he ran really well. No wishes at all. At this point in the process, I was actually pretty satisfied with how James looked and currently ran, but I recently became a member at a new club with a much larger layout and was able to give James a really good run. This layout showed me that I was actually not quite done with the red guy just yet. Uh, huh. One of these was the funnel. I wasn't satisfied with how much the top ring, I'm gonna call it, stuck out. I sanded this down along with Thomas's too, as the black spray paint thickened up too much around the top. Painted it up, then looking much better. Hey. James returned to the club again to test out his calling capabilities. I added more weights to his body. He can now hold decent loads. Like I've said before at this point, I'm pretty satisfied with how the model came out, but knowing me, this is never going to be the case. First thing I tackled was correcting the front of his running board right behind the buffer beam. This had warped due to the heat and me not correcting it after sanding. An easy-ish fix, just heat it up with the blow dryer or heat gun for a few seconds, bend back to the desired shape, holding it again for a few seconds, then using a weighted object to help keep its shape for a few minutes to fully cool down. I repeated this process a second time for my sake and after cooling. It goes into the freezer for about 5 minutes, in this case this is actually an hour because I have ADHD and got distracted by the new season of FORNITE! FIXED! Hooray! <laughs> Next was getting rid of these fugly bulky screw mounts. Easy and simple, I guess. Just cut it off and sanded it down, added a screw mount, boom boom bang. After that was the pony truck, cut that down and added support with the removed section. Reduce, reuse, and recycle. That's what we do here. But, tee -hee. This caused the truck to make contact with the screw mount, and, well, yeah, it's gotta go. After I removed that, I added the top piece of the truck that the prop has, too. Hee <laughs> hee! Looks good! But, this ended up causing an open gap behind the screw mount, so I filled the gap with some layers of plastic card and painted it black. I uh, also forgot to mention during all of this process, since I had to fix the running board, I had to remove the DCC plug wires. Good thing that was an easy fix. Until I did this. <laughs> mm. At this point, I'm pretty comfortable with James's current condition. He runs well and looks alright. This project took a lot longer than I thought it would, starting back in November last year and finishing him just this past April. Now, I could bang one of these models out in a few days, and I've seen plenty of people go into a hobby excited, burning through quickly, to only be burnt out after a few months. I've been there. A good reason why my channel became kind of quiet a few years ago. I find that taking breaks, maybe a few days or a couple weeks, lets the brain come back to a project with a fresh open mind. Nonetheless, I'm happy with what I made. This is my James. James the Red Engine. Stay gold! Hey, thank you for watching. If you like what you saw, subscribe. It would mean a bunch. Thanks again. Oh, wait. Oh, that's so much better. Hold on. <laughs>